have clicked. Good. Yeah, we're on. Excellent. Who wants to start? I'm just leaving. Who's going to start? Uh, I can start. Okay. Let me just accept Tammy to her video. Okay. Um, yeah, I've had a really good week. So, um, what are my buzzes? Um, we had a really great Have Your Say Day um, on Saturday, which um, we had adult and young carers giving their views on um, our strategy and what we're going to do moving forward. So that's really good. I'm just, uh, just writing my reflective diary and just about to read all the comments, but I haven't quite done that yet. So I'll leave that for Monday morning. Um, and just enjoying the lovely sunshine, which has been amazing. So I had a really nice board and went out and just spent the entire day in Sydney Gardens, which is parking bath, which is very nice. So I feel a bit knackered, but very happy. That's me. Uh, what about you, Tim? Um, I've been sort of messing around with my question, taking the intelligence part out of it, um, like I discussed last week. So um, looking at several titles with that and reading a book about David and Goliath, but it's, it's about small people winning, which um, I think is more what I'm about. Um, when I'm trying to think about what I can prove or disprove, I don't think I can disprove or prove anything about intelligence. It's no. just proving ridiculously complicated and stopping me getting anywhere, I think. Mm. Um, so um, I need to have a chat with Barry about how to move forward with it. But um, thinking of doing something about how do I get students to pass exams because effectively that's all I can argue um, because I don't think they're more intelligent from what I teach them um, and maybe it's time to accept that that my job is exam machine not um, not anything else because there's no way else that I'm measured at work if that makes sense and then I just don't know whether that's too big a cop out to just be bothering to do a PhD on so I'm sort of stuck between the the two at the moment, but intelligence is definitely not the way I'm going to go. Oh, I don't good. think. No. So mm. that's uh, that's where I am okay. at the moment. So. Yeah. You want to catch up, Robin? I've got sore feet from the <laughs> <laughs> I decided that sitting with the in the bowl in the sink with hot water was stupid when I can just put a hottie on them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been walking all day. It's absolutely beautiful. I yeah. just got the skyline mm. walk around for three hours. We've been walking today. Mm. Oh, lovely. Cool. Yeah. That's interesting, Tammy. What, I'm just wondering what you're interested in. What's your passion? What are you passionate about and what do you do? That was, my, that was what I was just wondering about as you were speaking. Um, I don't know because I think the only thing that I can think of with doing the PhD is it's not all the passion out of everything. That I mean, I've had a really, really bad week at work, um, dreadful, and that's not going to get any better. Mm. And it feels like it doesn't matter what I'm passionate about. I'm an exam machine. But what is it? What are the little nuggets that make it a good day? Even if you have to think back a bit to when you did Just have a good day. Because I love the kids. Right, the kids. Every day is a good day with yeah. the kids. Every yeah. day, you know. So what um, is it about the kids? What is it? They're sparky. They, it's their determination to pass as much as mine. Does that make sense? They're are you still there? Well, everything's gone. I'm still got. Um, I've got you, Sonny. I've got Robin. Yeah. Yeah, I've got Marie. Tammy, it's Tammy that's just gone. She might be back. Heck, we were just getting somewhere. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> God. That's what we have to lead on. Oh no, it is. It is because I, I recognise exactly where Tammy is. You know, because I was there in my first and second year of teaching. You know, you have to get them with the best grades possible. And yet, at the same time, you want to retain your integrity about the values you hold. 
And when Tammy says she loves the kids, you know, there's a value base, mm. um, which can be uh, actually with the desire to get the exams. But it's almost that, you know, Tammy, just at the moment as she was talking, I was subordinating everything just to, like an I am an exam machine. But know? she did light up. And yes. I'm just wondering oh, if we can link up yep. just helping the kids to remain more sparky. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, through their year before they get to the exams yeah. and approaching the exams. Well, whilst Tammy's just waiting to come on, can I just say that um, I had this uh, book for Sonia, which was uh, Thomas Kuhn's. It was a very fa famous book called The Structure of um, Scientific Revolutions. And it's just that um, Sonia was rejecting revolution as an idea. And I'm not rejecting it as an idea, I was rejecting it as something that I want to be part of. Right. So there's a. What I, <laughs> I want to just give you this text because there's a tension between your desire uh, to, I think, transform views about caring and what Thomas Kuhn is actually talking about in relation to uh, a revolution in the sense of a change of mind. What's it called? It's, yeah. called, it's called The Structure of Scientific Revolutions and it was where he popularised the notion of paradigm. Um, and it's always referred back to whenever people mention, you know, a seminal text in relation to paradigms. But he's got a beautiful... Go on. Okay, so the, the question around revolution, that there are different types of revolution. That yeah. there, that there are different ways of change, I mean. Yeah. There's a revolution, which is usually violent and fairly no. bloody. Okay, but that, if you like, there are different ways of thinking about a revolution. Okay. And this notion of, of the structure of scientific revolutions that he's talking about are not violent, no. but the, the kind of change of world view. The kind Although of, some scientists did die, I feel. In, <laughs> yes. In revolution. Yeah. Yes. They, so, so I've definitely just been watching something about a scientist okay. who was put to death around a scientific revolution. Yeah. For calling the world round and not the centre of the universe and that the sun was mm. the centre of our... Copernicus. Yes, I think he was killed, wasn't he? Um, well, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Revolution. I'm sorry if I'm a bit, you know, not not strong enough, but I'm not looking for my early death. <laughs> no, no, but it's... What I'm saying is that... You're I not going to die for your cause. <laughs> yes, die for the cause. Die for I know, the cause. I know I'm a wuss, but, you know, it's never been my yeah. style. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to bring this... Oh, are you okay for next No, no, Friday? no, wait a minute. We've got... Um, it's, there's a PDF of it. Well, um, see what I can just email it to you. Oh, it's probably old enough to get a PDF down of it. Uh, it's 28 um, megabytes. If you... It's all right. I'll look it up and get it. Should can you send me the link? Yeah, it's a long one. Yeah. Right. Um, yes, I am all right for next Friday. Is it all right to have it in the Carer's Centre? Yeah. yeah, I'll book it. That's great. That's great. Okay. Here's Timmy. Sorry, I crashed. Yeah, no, I've had. Uh, yeah, I saw you. Tell me. Yeah, crashed. I'm sorry. Up, we can pick up where you left off because you were talking about how you love the kids because of their sparkiness. Yeah, no, I, that's what I do love. I love the kids. Um, I actually love them being successful, but therefore comes the question. I've got it. You know, I can't use the word success because how do you measure success? You know what I mean? I've got one of those. Whatever word I use is the wrong word. But for me, success for them is getting their life chances to be better, which means they've got to pass exams. Um, and that's probably the time of year it is. But, um, yeah, they're sparky, they're brilliant. And I just want them to, to be able to get on, to, to have the best life chances. Mm. So. I'm just wondering what sparkiness means. Does that mean hopeful? Does that mean energetic? Lively, sort of inspirational, lively, lively. funny, um, yeah. engaging, confident. all of those things. Yeah, they're all confident all the time. Yeah, you don't need to worry about our kids' confidence. They're just amazing. They're just really good. Yeah, they're always confident. Um, they're just, they're just good people to be around. You know, it's it's the best part of, of being in education is the kids, and of course, the worst part is all the things that we have to do with them. <laughs> you know, um, 
to get them to be successful. You know, I'm not killing them as much now, Robin. I don't think. I don't <laughs> think I'm killing them quite as much. Um, Your understanding of that was much greater than mine. I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a very profound moment. I, that, you know, not killing the kids. Um, they are. The kids are always going to be amazing. I think. Um, and the kids are always going to deserve the best. And for me, it's about just giving them as much as I can to support that, if that makes sense. But um, but that's not necessarily something that you need to research. Yes, it if is. That makes sense. That's exactly what you should be researching, because the the the, the question is something between this wonderful natural sparkiness and confidence which you don't see in any of these faces on the screen here, we're <laughs> bowed down by lack of it through our lives, through our adult lives. So you want to say, what is, you know, what is the difference between the, those qualities that they've got and what happens to us? Mm. So what is it that you want to give them that they... Well, of course, you want them also to pass. Okay, okay, you can add the extra educational bits and exams, but... That seems important to me. Yeah, but could I just ask? It, it's okay. not so much. Yeah, no. It's, it seems that from what Tammy is saying, that it, that the kids and I recognise this already are sparky, yeah. lively, enthusiastic. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I imagine that Tammy is recognising is that the structure of the examination system. Yeah which they actually need to get through with the best grades possible for their life chances, if you like, mustn't be allowed to damage yeah. what mm. is already there. And I think that yeah. is worth researching. It is how mm. do you manage to retain that, yeah. Yeah, the delight, the sparkiness, the hope, whilst at the same time getting them as far as possible with the best grades possible. Now, I, re I recognise that as one of my fundamental tensions, which has always been with me, no matter whether it was over masters, doctorates, or with the kids. Mm. Now, that is definitely worth researching, Tammy, mm. because you have a passion to help those pupils in that area who are actually not getting the kind of life chances that you believe to be possible. So, yeah. that, so I, you know, I think we just, if we can, Tammy, if we can just stick out with this story, this narrative. Yeah. I mean, that that actually encapsulated it really well there, Jack, what you've just said about it, because it is a tension. Mm. Um, and I just, you know, reading the DFES all the time, I think maybe I yeah. should stop doing it, you know, I can't. But they, the fact that they're sparky and lively and everything makes for nothing in terms of what is measured yeah um and that's awful yeah. it, it is awful it's um but they are the kid i mean i'm just marking some year 12 work now and these are kids that are bright they're sparky they're so yeah. energetic they're lovely and i'm writing things like to get an a you must and then I think, you know, poor little buggers, they get this work back and it doesn't just say, oh, thanks for having a go at it. It's like, now you've got to do X, Y and Z to get your A. And that's what they want. You know, they yeah. don't want you to just say that's brilliant. But I think it must be horrible. You know, yeah, it must I, just be horrible. Can I just say what Maura Laidlaw used to do with, with faced with that problem, okay, exactly the problem you're talking about, was if you like open up a narrative in her responses. So, yeah. So... She put together the human um, and really passionate connection that she felt with her students in the responses she was giving and yeah. at the same time promote the excellence that she believed they were capable of. Yeah. Now, I think in your practice, you will be doing the same. You'll be communicating your valuing of who they are as people. You know, and that is something where I think the video can help to show this pleasure in their company and at the same time, you want them to be as excellent as they can be. Yeah. Yeah. But I know what you mean. I mean, it's, it, it's quite crippling, isn't it? You know, and you'll have had it done to you. And, I, you know, I think all of us have had it yeah. done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When, we were, when I was damaging my feet this afternoon, <laughs> I was talking to my friend about what would, because here we are, old biddies, what would we have done out through our lives if we hadn't done what we'd done? And I suppose I would have gone to university. But the reason I did, and I didn't, I didn't do nursing, yeah, anything. I was going to do nursing or teaching or anything where I didn't have to be at school anymore, you know, for state. <laughs> um, the reason I didn't go to university was because I didn't think 
I had it. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I'd always been in one of the lowest streams for all sorts of reasons, and I, I didn't think it, I was... So it seems to me that sparkiness, so your dialogue, yeah. your inquiry with the students helps them to know that just because this system's telling them they're not quite up to it, actually, these are fantastic people, and mm-hmm. somehow it's valuing them and knowing that you value them. How you do that with hundreds of kids, I don't know, but it's actually creating a dialogue with them where you, you let them know that they're fantastic. Yeah. But the system might tell them that they haven't measured up and won the thing, but actually they've got it. They've got what life needs. Yeah. Somehow that's what they need. It, and it yeah. might be, Tammy, we could show you a video of Sonia uh, with the young carers because Sonia yeah. also yeah. communicates uh, that the, the passion and the energy of being with the young people, you know, and valuing them enormously, which you will do, Tammy. And it's really well worth showing exactly what Robin is saying, that it's through this quality of yours, of faith in them, that I think you'll keep them motivated to do what are quite awful things in that, you know, getting them through the exams, and I was exactly the same. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I communicated, you know, that desire and the, the valuing of who they are, which you do value enormously. And yeah. as I say, we've got this video, uh, several of them, in fact, with Sonia, to show a similar kind of passionate energy that, that is communicated to the, in fact, there were young carers. Um, but, you know, th- th- we saw something at a school lo- called Ridlington, and they all brought their portfolios, and they were fantastic the way these kids, had, these young people had put together their narratives. So I, I think if we can just keep going with you, Tammy. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I, I, the trouble is I really empathise with that issue that you've got, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I just, sorry, I feel like I've put a downer. I'm, no, you I, haven't. I, I didn't no, mean no. to do that. It's just... No, um, no, definitely not. Not at all. I was thinking, I've been thinking quite clearly about what my question uh, yeah. might change to. Mm. And, um, and it's so difficult because those contradictions that, that we talk about all the time and those tensions, they're just massive between... You don't go in the job to be an exam person and that's what you turn into and I'd be doing the kids a disservice if I didn't turn into that if that makes sense you know um so yeah you're starting in the wrong place I I think you have to having identified that that's really important to you to get to to get them to that level where they can uh, open up the future through the exam thing, but actually, if you start there, I mean, you have to re- you have to keep it in view. Obviously, that's where you're going, but yeah. you need to start where they are. And you have these wonderful pupils, wonderful stu- kids, who are sparky and hopeful, and they think they're going to be, you know, save the world or do whatever. I don't know what people, what kids do these days. That's where you need to be. But bearing that in mind, rather than saying, there you are, but you've got to get here. I don't, I don't know how you do well, it. Well, can't you phrase a question that we've all faced, I think, which is, mm. how do I get, the, how do I contribute to getting the kids with the best grades possible whilst retaining the integrity of my educational values? You know, I, I think there's a, a way of putting both of those together in the question. Which I don't know that I've retained my integrity, though. All right, the, of your values. That you're, yeah. It feels to me that you've got this tension. Uh, I, I, and it's, go on. That's what's making you miserable, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Just so to reclaiming. Well, sorry, what, sorry, yeah. sorry. Sorry, sorry. It's only just loomed up here. Go on. Sorry, I'm just trying to say that Marie's come up with a better way round, I think, mm. which is, um, and you might maybe play with the words, but how do I enable my students to retain their sparkiness? while enabling them to get high yeah, grades. Yeah. Trying to make, rate, retain, is, is it's more about the bit that made you really excited was about their sparkiness. And and although that may yeah. be around your values, that's more what you're actually trying to achieve. And perhaps by trying to, say, retain your educational values, that will cause too much questioning of whether or not those values are still there. Whereas if you think, well, am I retaining their sparkiness? It's a bit more mm. you can tell yeah. in this room. Are they still sparky at the end of my uh, lesson or are they all looking dour and wishing they hadn't walked in the classroom at the end? 
most and of the time, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it something that, about how can I reclaim my sparkiness for you? How can how can you reclaim your sparkiness? sparkiness? Yeah. yeah. That's that's rather nice, that isn't it? Yeah. Retain mm -hmm. our sparkiness. Yeah. Right. Enable. Uh, it's the beginning of the process, so you could look at just you at the begin with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes yeah, it does. I suppose it ties in. I'm sure I'm not the only teacher that's that's thinking all of this at the moment. I'm sure no. I can't be, you know, because um, there's so much, Can I, I, so if, much going on. Yeah, no. If I just mentioned Catherine Forrester, who we had to give up two years ago through ill health. Now she's just putting in her Ed D thesis at Liverpool Hope. I'm going through the draft and responding. And you'll recognise, Tammy, um, that Catherine has been living with this tension that you've outlined mm. for all her teaching career. Yeah. And, and she's also written five narratives about her colleagues, which is all about how do you retain the hope in terms of what you believe in education in the face of all of these pressures. So I'll ask Catherine yeah. if I can share this with you, because... I do think, you know, it will resonate with what you're experiencing. Yeah. Have we lost Tammy yeah. again? Oh, no, no, we're okay. Yeah. It's none of it's... Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. yeah, good. I can't hear. I'm just logging on to what you put there, Marie. Thank you. I'm wondering, you said... Uh, can it just be me and is it just now? There's um, a book that um, Barry recommended to me some time back by a guy called Quinn. And he wrote this in 1997. I'll just read you a couple of the things that he wrote. And you can see that you are not alone. This is 1997, so what are we, nearly 20 years ago. Uh -huh. What assumptions do I first start with? First is that you are dissatisfied with current practice in this school perhaps in your own classroom. Children often surprise us in the midst of routine activities by the profound questions, by the glimpse of shocking intelligence, by the sheer intellectual care, by the tenacity, yet tender refusal to be browbeaten. This profundity in the midst of our many cares is something that frustratingly challenges us. We know that nurturing it is real education. We know that certain devices we have to do to facilitate it without undue effort and we wish we had a richer resource of such devices. My assumption is that you are at times a teacher which such needs, and that's this book addresses in a number of ways. I and mean, it so resonates, it's as though it was written yesterday rather than yeah. 20 years ago. He talks so about... 20 years ago, Marie, that's when my son was born. That mm -hmm. frightens me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. it's got... Um, that uh, is a nice distinction he makes about that uh, some of the uh, lessons have got very high um, academic okay. demands but very low intellectual demands. Mm -hmm. So uh, I often see children faced with activities that have excessive expectations of them academically whilst the intellectual expectations are laughably low. I mean, again, you would think that he was talking about mm -hmm. now can you can you write that quote out and send it with the I'll send you the I'll send you the, the, the quotes that um, yeah good I've got because okay. that's spoon feeding isn't it and the universities at the moment are condemning our A level students for not being able to work independently but yes. part of the exam culture has been that oh, yeah. we spoon feed to get them through the grains mm. yeah uh, and, you know I don't think there's any much um, of doing it. Mm. Because, um, for instance, not only is it that they don't want things to be in fact, you're getting exactly the same thing coming from, from business. And yeah. they complain about um, the um, uh, cultures around the world, like China, is that they have no spark of originality when they leave, no confidence yeah. in their ability to create their own knowledge. So, yeah. Um, so one of the people we work with, Sally Cartwright, um, she very much focused on that. Um, so for instance, kids did the AA6 project, and that fueled their, their enthusiasm. They came out with, uh, in the first tranche with 
five ace, five from got ace stars, the other got an A. The next ones, some of them didn't come out with such high because they, they were starting from different places, but they stunned the other teachers with what mm. these kids could eventually produce. And they're actually taking themselves seriously as students. Yeah. Um, you can send you a, a link to the video where the kids talk about that experience. So it's Thank not, you. You don't have to sacrifice your life. <laughs> and yeah. I think you probably do make them kiss sparkiness. But you, you, maybe they need to help you recognise that. Yeah. And, and could I also mention just something else as well? That I, I don't know if Robin feels this, but also tell me that if we can get uh, some of your story, which we can share with others... Whether you could get some, again, excitement of seeing that your values and what you believe in um, has got the potential of being spread, you know, to others. Now, I think Robin um, has experienced this pleasure. I, am I right, Robin, that you, you, you know, the, the, the very idea that, for example, as Tammy, you're talking, um, I'm not sure that you feel that by making your story public and the values you hold and the tensions, that this in itself can be very hopeful because you see other people literally being inspired by the struggle that you're having. Mm. Mm. Um, strangely influential as well. Amazing. Yeah. You feel mm. not alone anymore. Mm. Yeah, I, my, my, my thought, thought, Tammy, that it might be worthwhile just putting the other things just aside for a bit and just to free write about the joy that you have that you experience with some of the pupils yes. just to get recapture it yeah. what that what those moments feel like uh, yeah. if they are squashed quite a lot by all the other happenings in the week um, just to reclaim it for yourself what it feels like because then there's a mutuality if you're feeling that about them then you're going to be warming up your own feelings of what, it's, mm. what it is that you're looking for Maybe maybe that might be helpful. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll spend some time some mm. time having to think about it. I'm killing them like as badly as I was. But you know, everything is exam geared now. Um yeah. Yeah. and that's fine and I think we still have a laugh about it and we still do it in a creative way. But I'm being observed tomorrow because we've got a department review and that could be taken in any way. I mean, usually they give me outstanding, you know, but mm. that is not my head of department hates me being creative like that because I'm going to do some etymology tomorrow just because the kids will like it and I'll get them to understand what I want them to understand about the way that technology affects language. But it's exploratory understanding and it's completely frowned upon by my head of department thinks that she'd just go and tell them what it is and then move on. Well, they're not going to know it as well. You know, my no. job is to make them absolutely love it, understand yeah. it, and in May, hopefully get an A, if, yeah. if that's what I can do. Do you have a video? Um, can you video some lessons, Tammy? Um, I'm being observed tomorrow. I'll see if um, I've got a really good um, IT person. Yeah. I'll see if they can stick a video up and, Would you? and I'll do that lesson. Yeah. Um, if it's closed, we can use it, yeah. but I just can't show the kids on the video no, otherwise, no, no. you know. Yeah, no, I understand, um, yeah. But if you but, could, if you could yeah, just ask them to set it up so that, yeah, you're on the video, you know, I think we could. Is it fair me? Yeah. We get yeah. an awful lot from just seeing you in a creative lesson, doing what you believe in. Um, yeah. And it needn't show any of the children, but we could see you, um, yeah. you know, doing something you believe in. Uh, even yeah. whilst you're being observed, you know, with all the pressures of accountability. Um, Tommy, yeah. I think if you did that, um, it reminds me ever so much of Sally Cartwright, because she, what you said is that you know that engaging kids in the excitement of the work, the excitement of their own learning, Helping them to actually work at those higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy is a much better way and potentially far more successful in enabling them to get higher grades than at the moment your head of department is understanding. 
Well, I think it takes an act of courage mm. because everything you liked, Mick, Mick, what Mick Waters was talking about, if I remember rightly, and he said exactly yeah. the same that if you um, you teach to the test in the way that your head is head of department is saying that yes, you can get them so far, but it will not get to those higher levels. No. And the so you've got a lot of um, very influential voices that are saying exactly what it is that you're saying and that you know from your practice works. So if you, because you will anyway, do what it is that you think is right. Mm. So what it, actually by researching it, it enables you to both be able to show that what you know is right, is right, and also to be able to show yourself that you're actually still engaging with the sparkiness of these kids. Yeah. And maybe ask them to help you see that you're doing that. Because yeah. I think that maybe you're just not recognizing that you're actually doing what it is that you're wanting to do. And they would help give you the confidence. And actually involving them in that would also help them to feel involved as learners. Yeah. yeah. There's a, a guy who taught at a college called Chris Ashman. And he, he said that he tried to teach on the basis that the kids could learn. This is, of course, is, um, 16 to 18 year olds. They could learn faster than he could teach. Mm. Whereas his colleagues, because they were presenting the information, they could only possibly learn as fast as they could deliver the stuff. So you're going beyond that. Yeah. You're opening up the... I, th I think you're doing it. <laughs> you haven't got any, there's only confidence in, in that you're doing it. And you also got no confidence to be able to back it up with. Mm. Yeah. But do see that, Tammy, if you can get just that video. It would be, yeah. be lovely just to see you, um, you know, within that lesson where you're being creative. And even if we don't see any of the kids, just to have uh, just you in practice. Mm. I think we'd be able to work with that um, and build up a narrative, you know, which focuses on the values that you, you're expressing. Yeah. Um, so I, I do hope we can manage that. Anyway, even not, not tomorrow, you know, whenever you can do it. Yeah, no, I mean, it'd be quite nice if it's been an observed lesson because yeah. um, I think it'll, it'll tie into that. Good. Another, another thing you might, want, might not want to do, but you can think about is... <coughs> Keeping a video on you and afterwards yeah, yeah. asking some of your students to look at that video with you and help you to understand through their eyes what it is that they are seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be quite a revelation to you. Mm. Yeah. And if you then video you and your students actually looking at that screen and listening, you listen to them very carefully in the way that they're analysing what they're seeing, then that, that would be fantastic data for you to actually use. Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. I, I was just thinking, are we okay now? You know, because um, Sonia's going to do some reflective writing. Um, if that's there, you know, tomorrow I've got a bit of time, tomorrow afternoon, and I could actually respond to that. I'll bring the Thomas Kuhn thing for Friday, but I'll send a note round because we're going to focus on your writing, Sonia, on Friday. That was what you asked, wasn't it, with Chris? Is that right? Yeah, but he can't come until I think it's the weekend or the week after now. So I'll okay, double -check. okay. So you prefer it the week the week after, yeah? Yeah, I'll double check. I mean, it might be handy to just have a little look anyway beforehand, but I don't want to. I don't want to hog it, so... No, 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 but it's good if we can actually focus, because Nigel won't be there. Um, and if we've got some of yours, then we can focus on it. Anyway, that, that yeah, that'd be good. I'll yeah, send you through the link for the tune book, yeah. and you can download a lot of it. So uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks for that. Okay. Brilliant. Are we all right? I've sent uh, you through Chani and everybody else, the, uh, mm -hmm. just the quotes, some of the quotes that I liked from Quinn. Thanks. It's a really, me. really nice book, um, and it was Barry who put me onto that, so I really enjoyed that. It's very good reading. Yeah. But, oh, have you emailed that, Marie? Sorry? Um, yeah, it's just come through now, it's, Sonia. It's come through, yeah, on the email. Oh, yeah, I see it, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I'll put this up on the unlisted tomorrow. And so, you know, at least we've got the record. If I yeah. want to go back into it, that'd be good. Yeah. Good. Okay, guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Robin, you're looking as if you're trying to say something. Oh, Miss Marie, before we, before you go, you all are seeing something written there. How did, how do you find it? Where is all this stuff? There's a little thing on the bottom, um, yeah. Robin. Yeah. You know where um, underneath where our faces are, yeah. And it's got a little bubble, and if you click on that, it's like a little speech bubble. Yeah. Have you got that? Yeah. If you click on that, you should get the writing down there as well. But, there's, but there isn't any writing there. There will be, Robin, if you just keep at it. And you've sometimes got to drag it and ah, dra drag it down. I got it. How do I enable my students to retain their spark? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, we'll see okay. you soon. Good to go. Yeah, see bye you bye next week. Yeah, see you bye later. Bye. Bye-bye. Some, bye. Send some writings through, Tammy. Will do. You did send some through. You did before. Really good. Good yeah. start. I'm looking forward to the next bit. Okay. All right. See you later. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.